It's that time of year again when Samsung has released some new smartphones. This year, it's the Galaxy S22. I've purchased two in order to take them apart and see how they work, but also how repairable they are. Similar to previous orders, Samsung has quite literally thrown these phones in a box and shipped them to me. With my pre-order, I will also receive a free gift. I say will as it hasn't arrived yet and is shipping to me in a separate parcel. It's time we opened up the two Galaxy S22 phones and see what we got. I'll start with the green S22. Like last year, we have a slim box that contains just the phone and a USB-C cable. With one unpacked, it's time for the next. It was nice that Samsung was able to get my phones shipped out earlier than expected, but this meant my free gift of a charger is now shipping in a separate parcel. This is kind of ironic because the argument behind removing the charger from the box was to help the environment by reducing packaging and the emissions that came from the manufacturing and shipment of the product. Do you think this is done for the environment, or do you think companies have some kind of other idea? I don't know, but let me know down in the comments. Some might be wondering why I've purchased two of the same phone. Well, like in all my teardown and repair assessment videos, I take two phones and interchange parts between them to simulate repairs. It's becoming common practice for companies to have full control on who can fix your phone. We've seen this from companies like Apple, although in recent years Samsung has done some notable things as well, including disabling the fingerprint reader on the A51 after screen replacement or the cameras on the Galaxy Z Fold 3 after unlocking the bootloader. What I want to see is if they've included this or anything else preventing repairs or modifications on the Galaxy S22. For those wondering, this is the SM S901e model running the January 2022 security patch. Last year on my S21 teardown, I had many comments about what would happen if you put the SIM eject pin into the microphone hole. It clearly says not to, but we'll find out later on. With that, these S22s are set up and ready to be taken apart. I'll start by placing the first Galaxy S22 on a heat plate for several minutes to soften the adhesive holding the back panel in place. This year, Samsung has gone back to the dreaded glass back panel. It looks and feels just like the plastic one from last year, although this time it will break on a drop and can break when trying to pry up the back. So I'll need to take extra care when prying around with some plastic picks. The idea here is to separate the adhesive from the midframe, as that's what's holding the panel in place. The hardest part is around the camera area. There is significantly more adhesive in this area compared to the rest of the back panel. Once the back panel is free, I can remove any residual adhesive left on the midframe. With one phone open, it's time for the other. I'll need to repeat this exact same process for our green S22. The opening procedure is similar to any Galaxy S series phone from the S6 onwards. The adhesive is still weaker than what's found on the iPhone, which makes getting inside much easier. Although it should still be noted that if the back is cracked, it will make removal slightly more difficult. If you do need to open the back of your Samsung for any reason, it's important to reapply new adhesive when it comes time to reattach the panel. Otherwise, the panel won't stick down properly and this could cause dust or liquid to enter the phone. With both backs removed, we have our first look inside the Galaxy S22. It has a very familiar look to last year's S21, although it's still a bit hard to tell as the motherboard and other internals are still covered by the wireless charging module. So that's what we'll get out of the way next. Thankfully, Samsung isn't trying to stop us from taking the phone apart by using any hidden or security screws. Just a standard Phillips screwdriver does the job. With the one flex cable disconnected, the module can be lifted up and unadhered from the bottom section of the phone. Next, the plastic antenna up top can be taken out to reveal the motherboard below. At this point, I've uncovered some interesting things. On the display cable, I've noticed the wrong model number. Printed is the US model of the phone. This could mean they're using US parts on this Australian model. On the motherboard itself, it's also got two missing connectors and a couple of empty spaces around the frame. This is likely for models equipped with 5G millimeter wave. Now it's come time to remove the motherboard. I'll start by disconnecting the battery before all of the remaining flex cables connecting to various components throughout the phone. After that, only one screw is holding the camera in place before the entire motherboard can be lifted up and out of the phone. 
Below it is a second speaker and the earpiece combo, as well as the front camera and cutout for the proximity sensor. Looking at the motherboard itself, it's a multi-stacked PCB that houses a Snapdragon CPU and 128 gigs of storage. It seems Samsung isn't using their own processor in most of their models anymore, and instead has made the switch to using Qualcomm. The US models have always used Snapdragon CPUs instead of the Exynos processor made by Samsung. These phones have always had a locked bootloader and therefore could never install custom firmware. Is this now the case for international phones that have Snapdragon processors? Well, I guess we'll have to find that out later on. To simulate every common repair, I'll swap the motherboards between the two phones. A large portion of anti-repair mechanisms are actually found in software, so swapping every hardware part will show us if any issues arise. So I can keep track of things, I'll label the parts so I know what phone they came out of. I'll also need to remove and swap the cameras between the phones so that our test is accurate. Essentially, the motherboard is going to be attached to all different parts. When I did this to an iPhone 12 and later with the iPhone 13, the cameras started glitching, Face ID didn't work, battery health was disabled, True Tone had vanished, and all of these warning messages appeared. What will happen with the Galaxy S22? Well, let's find out. With the green phone's motherboard in the silver frame, it's time to reattach everything. I won't install any screws just to save some time, but the phone will work regardless. I'll flip the phone over and power it up. Upon boot, I can see a warning notification. Could it be? Nope, it's just a message telling me I don't have a SIM card installed. But just because there's no immediate error messages doesn't mean there isn't something hiding in the software. It's time I go through and test all the functions of the phone. Starting with the fingerprint, it still worked and was able to register both the fingerprint programmed before and after swapping the display. Auto brightness functions, as well as any diagnostic tests that I ran, all passed with flying colours. Additionally, all of the cameras work as expected in both photo and video modes. Even face unlock and the high refresh display options still work. It's almost like you actually own this smartphone. But let's not jump to conclusions too fast before we test out if the bootloader can be unlocked. Enabling developer options, I can see OEM unlocking is present. This means we can unlock the bootloader. I'll need to enter the phone into download mode by holding the volume buttons while connecting the phone to a computer. When you see a blue flash, you'll know you've entered the mode correctly. For some reason, it automatically sets the brightness to 0%, so it's almost impossible to see what you're doing or agreeing to. Once you enter the bootloader unlock mode, you can unlock it. This screen mentions that the phone will wipe as soon as you do this, and it may void your warranty. Things someone might miss considering you can barely see the display. On reboot, you can see that this is giving us a warning message that the phone's bootloader is unlocked. This is pretty standard for any Samsung Galaxy device, so there's nothing to be concerned about. Booting back up into the operating system, I'll go through and test all of these functions I just tested again to make sure that nothing changes after the bootloader is unlocked. Remember, the Galaxy Z Fold 3 disabled its cameras after the bootloader was unlocked. For the Galaxy S22, that's not the case. That being said, there are still some things Samsung disables. This includes Secure Folder, Samsung Pass, and the Samsung blockchain key store. This has been usual practice for Samsung phones with unlocked bootloaders for years now. Oddly, after updating the blockchain key store app, I was able to enter it with an unlocked bootloader. That being said, I didn't go through and completely set it up, so it might give you an error later on. It's important to know that if you flash non-Samsung software after unlocking the bootloader, these functions will never work again, even if you load the original software and relock the bootloader. As I've never installed any custom ROMs, I can relock the bootloader and the phone will return to an out of box state with all of these functions working again. If you care about having an unlockable bootloader with no consequences, a Samsung might not be for you. I will remove the motherboard in preparation for swapping the phones back into their original state. However, before we do so, I'll continue taking apart the phone some more. Down at the lower section of the phone, let's find out what happens when you put the SIM eject pin into the microphone port. 
To get a proper look, I'll take out the speaker which is held in place with seven Phillips head screws. Underneath is the charging port. It's modular and can be removed by unplugging three cables and unfastening three more screws. With it free, we can finally see how the microphone works. It's placed horizontally on the printed circuit board. This means inserting an eject pin into the microphone port won't damage it. Also located at the bottom is a water damage indicator and the connector for the display. This detachable cable is a genius idea. If you damage it removing the battery, you can just replace it and not the whole screen. Looking at the battery capacity, I am shocked to see that it's 410 milliamp hours less capacity than the S21. What hasn't changed is the ridiculously strong adhesive holding it in place. All lithium ion batteries wear out, making it easy to replace should be mandatory. Regardless, some heat from my heat plate, alcohol and a bit of patience, I was able to pry the battery free. With that, we've now fully disassembled the Samsung Galaxy S22. Compared to phones like the iPhone, this is simple to disassemble. There is significantly less components, no security screws, and only two screw lengths. However, the battery is still glued in too hard, just like previous years. Now, all that's left to do is reassemble the phones, and hopefully, everything will work perfectly. I'll start by swapping the camera modules back onto their original motherboards. From here, I can remove any of the labeling I've added to identify each phone before we reinstall the motherboards back into the frame. For our silver phone, this will also include the battery, charging port, and several flex cables. I reused the original adhesive for the battery, as even after it had been removed, it was still too strong for me to pull up using a suction cup. So I am confident that that battery is not going anywhere. With that, I can continue assembling the phone by installing the charging port and the flex cables that attach to it and the display before the speaker is reinstalled. Proceeding, the motherboard can be positioned into place and have its one screw installed to secure the camera assembly. Afterwards, all of the cables can be plugged in. Next, the antenna and wireless charging module can be positioned into place. From here, all of the Phillips head screws can be attached to secure both the wireless charging module and upper antenna. Proceeding, I can wipe off the lenses before we attach the back panel. Usually, you would apply some new adhesive, but as this is a brand new phone and I'm not able to get any replacement adhesive, for the time being, I'll just sit it on as is. With one complete, it's time for the other. It'll be reassembled in a similar manner. It's important to note the two different size screws present in the S22. The smaller, shinier screw is used to secure the earpiece. The longer screws are used for everything else. With all the screws fastened, I can clean off the camera lens before reattaching the back panel. With that, we've now completed the teardown and repair assessment on the Galaxy S22. So this is it, Samsung's new phone for 2022. It might not have all the features, like a headphone jack or an SD card slot, but it's quite a repairable smartphone with an unlocked bootloader. So you can customize it and repair it as much as you like. One thing to keep in mind is always use parts from the same model of phone. Different variations of one phone might have incompatible parts. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the teardown and repair assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.